So you want a Tiger 1200, but there are five bikes in the lineup and you're not sure which one to buy. Well, fortunately, I've been loaned four of them by Triumph, the Road Bias GT model, the Off-Road Bias Rally, and both of their long distance Explorer counterparts. So in this video, we're gonna take them all out for a good test and tell you exactly which of these awesome adventure bikes is the right one for you. but I can't possibly ride four bikes at once, so I've invited three friends of the channel to help me out. And a great adventure bike has to be a great all-rounder. So the plan is to ride across to Wales, where we can give them a score for the four main disciplines of adventure bike riding. At the end, that'll give us a numerical winner, but we'll also tell you which one we'd actually buy if it were our own money. Oh, and while we're doing it, we'll all be comparing notes along the way with Cardo's top of the range Pack Talk Edge communication system. But more about that later later. So first up, there are plenty of adventure bikes that get used for commuting, as well as picking their way through towns and cities when you're on a longer tour. So which of the Tiger 1200s is the easiest to get on with at low speeds? I asked my city dwelling chum Tim to take them for a spin around the car park in order to find out. How tall are you? That's the most important thing, isn't it, when it's seat height? Yeah, I'm not sure. I tell people 5'10". I'm 5'10". So how does the taller bike feel then when you're 5'10"? All of these do feel tall to me. The smallest and most accessible definitely is the GT Pro and then the Explorer did feel a little bit taller maybe a bit more unwieldy maybe it's just the weight that sort of tricked my mind a little bit and then obviously the adventure bikes I mean you saw me trying to get my toes down that was an effort and I should say we've got all the seats in the low position today just to make it kind of easiest for everyone to get on with and a consistent sort of oh, test they across the yeah they're all in the low so yeah for low speed riding the seat height's a big one the other thing's the tank how pronounced is the effect of like 30 liters versus 20 uh, yeah quite a big effect I think I did absolutely immediately notice it i think mm. when i'm doing the low speed maneuvers and stuff you can just feel that it has a bit more mass to it and what about that bigger 21 inch front on the rally models when you're doing tight u-turns and things like that any notable difference the height and the bigger wheel didn't make as much of a difference as the weight difference so number one we're saying best for city riding and commuting and low speed work would be the easily the gt pro second the rally Pro. Interesting. Yeah. Then I think it'd be a toss up between, well, actually, it would be the GT Explorer, right? And last place. And last place for me personally would be the Rally Explorer. Makes sense. Tallest, heaviest, off road biased. Yeah. Well done, mate. <laughs> Thank you. You're all done. Now it was time for us to hit the road. And to get to the good stuff, there is a decent stretch of motorway riding. It might not be the most thrilling, but it does represent a large share of the miles done on large capacity adventure bikes. With plenty of power, comfort, and low capacity, they're ideal for touring. But which of these Tigers? would be the best over distance. I've had plenty of chance to ride the lineup this year, including at the press launch out in Portugal, and so here's my take. And for me, there are two bikes that have a massive advantage in this regard, and that's the Explorer models. You know, clearly the big one is the 30 liter fuel tank. That's gonna give you 50% more range. And on top of that, it gives you a bit of extra wind protection around the legs. So you really do feel cocooned on the Explorer models. Then you've got the rear facing radar. So that gives you blind spot warnings on the mirrors. And the whole package on those two Explorer bikes just makes them far superior for touring. Now there isn't honestly a massive amount in it between the GT and Rally for me. I wouldn't say the size of the front wheel makes a huge difference. More so the tires. The stock tires on the Rally do make it a bit more noisy on the motorway. But yeah, for the slightly lighter weight, the slightly lower stance, which I think more people will find it easier to get on with, and that slightly more road biased wheel and tire setup, I'm gonna say the GT Explorer is the top dog for touring. Second, the Rally Explorer, of course, for the big tank and the rear facing radar. And then naturally you've got the GT Pro with that slight road bias. And then lastly, the Rally Pro. Onwards and upwards as we headed to the Manmol Pass for a bit of sliding around on some gravel. But before we get onto those off-road rankings, I just wanna say a massive thanks to Cardo for sponsoring this video. We all use their Pack Talk Edge on this ride along with our photographer Max, and honestly, it's the first time I've tried a comm system with a group of five riders. But I was so impressed with it and it totally transforms the group riding experience. We even got stuck in a massive traffic jam and those parts of the ride that would normally be a bit of a snow 
ignore are actually still quite entertaining as you all comment on the mayhem. But for me, the most impressive feature on these new units is the Gen 2 dynamic mesh communication. This tech means that up to 15 riders can easily join a group and you get a crystal clear signal with a range of up to a mile. Even if a couple of riders do drop off, the network automatically heals seamlessly when they catch up, so there's no need to manually pair again. I was also kind of expecting to get a lot of wind noise and breathing, especially with so many riders in the group, but the noise reduction on the microphones is absolutely spot on, and the JBL design speakers deliver proper good audio quality. Seriously, these made the whole day so much more fun, so if you want to upgrade your group rides, then head to the links down in the description below, where you'll also find a discount code specifically for my viewers. Now look, if you wanted a good city and motorway bike, you could just buy a regular Tourer. But the appeal of the adventure machine is that go-anywhere, all-terrain attitude. The ability to take on some broken roads and gravel is only going to add to the sense of exploration. And so who better than Henry Crew, who's both ridden around the world and now hosts off-road tours, to give us the lowdown. So you've been out on the rally and the GT. On, you didn't find the difference as pronounced as you might expect. I think the geometry is very different. When you stand up on the GT Pro, you can feel it's a smaller bike and it's not quite set up the same for stand-up riding. The Rally Pro is so comfortable to stand up, it feels just like a dirt bike. But in terms of rideability, I yeah. was really surprised at how well the GT Pro handled. Obviously it's dry, it's gravel, there's nothing technical and I think that's where the 21 inch front wheel and a, and a slightly better set of tyres would, would come into play a bit more. But for this sort of thing, you can definitely get away with it on a, on a GT Pro. With the big tank Explorer versions, a little bit heavier, how much a difference do you think that'll make? For this terrain, nothing. You, you probably wouldn't really notice it. It's only when you get a bit stuck. Even turning around in, in these single, single track roads it yeah. is a bit of a pain and you have to sort of get used to the bike and, and that weight. But I mean, I don't think the difference is, is that it's not as diverse as I thought it would be throughout the range yeah. when on this level of off-road. So ranking the bikes, what would be your top pick for off-roading? For off-road, definitely the, the Rally Pro. Second? Probably the Rally Explorer, just because of the extra travel and suspension and the Rally Pro mode, which makes yeah. a big difference. But the GT Pro is not that far behind. I assume GT Explorer. Well, just, they're the, but they're the same bike, it's just one's a bit heavier, really. So of course, the Rally models take the points on gravel, but what about the smooth stuff? For me, any bike should be able to deliver on a good stretch of tarmac, and fortunately there are plenty of those in South Wales. This is the beautiful B4560, which is the perfect road to see what the Tigers can do. And so as we finished our ride at Baffle House, which is one of my favourite biker spots, I spoke to Dan from English Biker Dan to find out which was the best handling bike. Alright, sporty riding, you've had a bit of a chance to push it on the Rally and the GT. Mm -hmm. Which one was your favourite? Um, the GT Pro, definitely. It feels a bit more dynamic to me. Rally Pro obviously is way better off-road, but the kind of shifting balance when you're braking on the Rally Pro, mm. you don't get that on the GT Pro. It's a bit stiffer and it's a bit more set up for road riding. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And then you've got the right wheel sizes, right tyres. Did you notice a big difference on the road between the 30 litre tank and 20 litre tank? Yeah, so with the Explorer, it just felt a little bit slower to turn in. The 1200 GT Pro just felt a little bit sharper and sort of across the board, really. And the yeah. Explorer just felt a little bit slower to accelerate, brake and turn in as well. Makes sense. Ranking them, mm -hmm. GT Pro is your top. Yeah, definitely. And then... Uh, Explorer. Third would be... The Rally Pro. And then Rally Explorer. And then the Rally Explorer. Yeah. And so with all the scores in, assuming that you weight these categories equally, to my surprise, the GT Pro came out top. Then it's the Rally Pro and GT Explorer, followed by the Rally Explorer with the fewest points. But then which bike would we actually buy with our own money? Well, sometimes you buy with your heart and not your head. If I was using it for the riding I do at the moment, and a lot of it's commuting, hands down I would get the GT Pro. The bike that I actually like the most from today is the GT Explorer, despite what I said about it being heavier and having fuel range that I don't need. There's something about it that feels feels a little bit lower, more planted. That's probably the one I'd get. And I also think it looks really nice in that colorway. I think I'd get the Rally Explorer. It's probably a bit of a strange choice, but 
I think realistically, the Rally Explorer, you can do anything that you can do on the Rally Pro. You're not gonna take it on anything that extreme and you just get a bit of extra fuel range. It does feel a bit more planted. It is a lot of extra money for like a bigger fuel tank and blind spot detection, but it's imaginary money, isn't it? So I'll get the, get the Explorer. With my own money, I think I would have to choose the 1200 GT Pro. It just handles really lovely on the road turns in sharp. It feels the same as my 850 in terms of weight, but it has a whole lot more power, a lot more punch, brakes are sharper. Yeah, it's just an awesome bike and it's really comfortable as well. Me, I think I'd go for the Rally Explorer, which is easy to say because it's like the most expensive and it's got all the features, but really a bike like that is, I think anyway, suited best to touring and I think it's the one that just feels like the most versatile, the best for long distances, and it's still plenty of fun on the road when you do want to push it. So for me, it just does a bit of everything. You see, I think the bikes we picked reflect the types of riding we enjoy the most. And so I'd love to know from you which Tiger 1200 you'd buy down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, then hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.